the Vermont Supreme Court is uh, are five very different, very smart individuals, um, but you know they represent a wide range of of opinions. I mean, they represent a wide range of time. You have uh, Justice Dooley and Justice Johnson, who were appointed by Madeleine Cunin back in the eighties. Um, you have Justice Scoglin, who was appointed by Dean, and you have Justice um, Chief Justice Ryber and Justice Burgess, uh, who were appointed by Douglas um, in the in the the, the aughts. And so, you know, they're going to come to a case with very different uh, opinions and, and viewpoints, and certain justices have a jurisprudence to grind. You know, Justice Johnson, in a recent case um, the, the, of Mice and Miranda that I summarized, really talked about the need for some type of protection when you're doing um, Miranda-type um, uh, in, what do you have the right questioning. to remain yeah. silent? You yeah, uh, well, when, you, when you're doing, inter you know, when, you, when you're questioning a witness and the, uh, when, when you're questioning this witness and you have to give, deliver the Miranda, you know, Justice Johnson has a very strong viewpoint that there should be a great deal of protection to that particular event and there should be meaningful waiver of that, um, uh, of those rights. And she dissented, and you know she went through a very lengthy process of dissenting and, and laid out a case. And it's she referred back, and if you refer look at the cases she referred back to, there's a clear line that she has for a long time advocated um, for this particular type of jurisprudence that that would raise the standard um, in her decisions. And she just didn't get a majority in this case, um, and so it remains in the in the minority. But tomorrow, if she gets two justices to join her it's going to be a majority opinion. And it's kind of interesting to watch that. Um, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, that's the dynamic of the law, the give and take, the evolution of it, or the reentrenchment of it. You know, it, it goes back and forth. So yeah, the, the court's splitting on a couple p cases. I wouldn't say it's a, it's a fractious court. It's certainly uh, a congenial court um, there to, to deal with. There's not. Um, you know, it's not as if there's there's justices that won't talk to each other, or you know, won't give each other steely glares during um, right. oral argument. But you know, they have they're smart people, and they're not going to back down and say, oh well, if that's the way the rest of you are going, I'll go that way too. Uh, you know, they want to assert their opinion because they have one. You reminded me of the uh, recent headline that um, on the national level, Clarence Thomas just got the the five year silence award. But in this, our five justices all engage uh, and uh, don't just sit back and watch uh, argument. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Have you had a? Yeah, I, I've argued before them. I, I actually argued while I was a law student. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, they all asked me questions. <laughs> and they, are you, do you feel like you're being peppered? Or is it like, um, just asking? <laughs> well, I, I had I had written down a nice little speech. I had everything planned out, you know, and as soon as I got up there, I was getting asked questions before I even finished phrasing the issue, at least in the way I had wanted to phrase it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it depends there. on the case. I mean, there are certain justices with certain interests, um, and there are certain cases that bring out questions, and there are certain sides. I've, I've argued cases before the Supreme Court where you know, I just happen to have a good argument, uh, not because I put it together, but I just happen to be in a position where the, the law was going in the direction of my client, and the justices didn't have a lot of questions for me. They had a lot of questions for the other side, mm -hmm. and they just, you know, hit her left and right um, with, a, with a lot of questions. But it, it just depends. They're all really intelligent people, so they all have, you know, questions. Not to say that Clarence Thomas isn't intelligent, he's just, that's, he doesn't believe in oral arguments. And, and to be quite honest, oral arguments are kind of an antiquated uh, device in that we're taught in law school, oral arguments are where you lose cases. You almost never win them. Oh. It's a formality. Clients love it. It's, you know, gets, it's fun. It's a challenge to do. But it's not. It's in the briefing. It's in the language. The cases are won and lost uh -huh. for the most part. Unless, of course, you get up there and you make some fatal error and they pick up on it and then you watch your case sort of crumble. Right. Uh, but by and large it just really depends uh, on the write writing itself. And then this, I don't know, an element of theater? Is that fair to say in, oral, in the 
less so in oral arguments than say like trial work. But yeah, I mean, there's a certain you, you come out and there's a pomp and circumstance, and you're you're formal, and you know you you have there are certain rules to how you uh, do an oral argument, and you are expected to honor those conventions, and the but it's it's very much a uh, you know, you, as Andrew said, you, you have a prepared speech just in case no one's asking you questions, but then you never get past really the, the first couple uh, parts of that because they come in and it becomes a, a conversation, a give and take. And the best advocates are ones who can just sort of say, ah, it's an interesting point. Let me answer it and spin off and continue this conversation so it feels less like an interrogation, which is the word I was searching for earlier, and more of a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're wor they're working every week. They're not a, a part time. They're they're issuing um, every Fridays. They might have vacation. Yeah. But no, I think some of them do work at McDonald's, um, <laughs> uh, but that's only on the weekends. Uh, they're the, compared to say the legislature. They're they're functioning year oh, yeah. round. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They, they're year round. And if you look, you know, they issue decisions. I mean, they, they have certain terms. I mean, they have certain periods where they'll take argument oral arguments. But when they're not doing oral arguments, they're writing the decisions, and that's a long and lengthy process that takes a while because they, you know, and that's that's why I think they feel comfortable with people coming out and and questioning or analyzing the decisions because they're not just tossed off haphazard. You know, there are things that they've thought out. There are things that they've researched in there, um, and they can stand behind it. Hopefully, uh, you know, and that's why they that's why they issue it, um, and it takes it takes them a fair amount of time. So they're they're going all all the time. Okay. Um, I don't know if we ought to move to some recent posts just to give people a flavor of uh, uh, what what they'll find if they go to the. Uh, <laughs> Scoff Law blog. Um, brilliance. That's what they'll find. <laughs> Radiating brilliance. Wear sunglasses. Well, it's a nice combination of uh, learning stuff and like laughing a little too. So yes. I, I thank you for that balance. Um, it isn't deadly dry, and it isn't. Um, I guess the humor. I, I, as an example, Andrew, your your recent. I think it's the most recent post that's up now called "Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll." It's like a crack pat party gone bad, basically. <laughs> and um, the, I guess, I, I don't know if you want to share the case, and then maybe in writing about it, how you worked with like the humor aspect, because that's a you know tricky topic if you're talking about, you know, aggravated assault. And I mean, you know, it's keeping it quote unquote light is going to be tricky. And it's but, but the humor, I, the humor aspect, I guess, is the process of the writing of Digesting the, that. The, the process of writing, I guess, uh, the, the most recent post was, um, I mean, legally, it, it's kind of interesting because there's this guy who is accused of aggravated sexual assault, which includes having another person participate in the sexual assault. This is how he's charged. And apparently he and his girlfriend picked up this woman who was out partying on New Year's and had a buzz. And it, the, the facts are just kind of um, extreme. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, trying to keep it light might not be something I should really be doing, but I try to just kind of strike a balance there. Yeah, yeah, that's, I guess that's the um, essential uh, challenge. It, yeah, I, I mean, you know, you don't want to come right out and call somebody names or, or something like that or take cheap shots, but, you know, I think, I think you've got to kind of laugh at these things or they'll drive you a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, right. I, um, I, I worked in a, psych hospital for a while and there was, there was, there was sort of a, a gallows humor that was just uh, got people through and I imagine um, so you guys probably see the more difficult sordid sides of life and lawyering and ugly divorces and the works. Yeah, I, I find actually zoning and land use disputes to be the worst uh, outside of divorce cases. Um, the passion that people bring to property. Huh. Is, is unparalleled. Huh. Um, 
these cases, you know, it, it's in the public record, and this brings up an interesting issue of uh, defamation and libel, which we're always <laughs> conscious of, uh, because unlike, right. say, a fictional character where you can just have them do anything yeah. and comment and say what a really terrible person they are and not that bright, yeah. here we have to really be careful because there are real people and right. they may have an axe to grind with us. Um, yeah. Not that we have and deep who pockets. who can blame them? And who, who can? I mean, we uh, <laughs> well, but, society, I would hope. But, but uh, <laughs> You're also um, putting yourself out there as actual real-life human beings. It's not like you're posting as Awesome Guy 76 or this something. Your names are attached. There are links to the places you work I can't you believe you know with. my secret <laughs> password <laughs> name. But, uh, we, <clears throat> yeah, no, we, I mean, that, that, that was part of the idea originally is that it was a self-promotion tool, which is if we're going to put all this time into it and do it, we might as well get credit for it. And we mm -hmm. might as well have people say, you guys are great. Uh, high five. And, of course, there, Again, there's the other side of that too. Yeah, the short-sightedness, yeah, not yeah. forgetting that you know maybe people wouldn't say that, and they'd say, "You <laughs> idiot, why did you do this?" <laughs> but um, you know, it, it, if I could kill you and get away with it. I would. What we, <laughs> I've done it in my mind already. Uh, what what we do to sort of keep ourselves on the, the right side of that line is um, is to really stick to the public record. Um, and to be fair, fairly clear when we're issuing opinion, because of course it, opinion is not um, defamatory or libel. That's why blogs can flourish the way they can. They can call people dumb, and 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 you know they can say you know that the, these people are, are terrible um, because it's opinion, and and that's our First Amendment right. What we really have to be careful about is characterizing the facts within the public record. But fortunately, what we found is that the Supreme Court's records. Are just rife. They're 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 fecund with all kinds of. It's the first time I heard fecund on this show, isn't it? Yes. Um, one of my favorite words. Um, but <laughs> anyway, it's just fecund with uh, with all kinds of uh, material. You know, these these things in a lot of ways write themselves. I, I just did one um, that I haven't posted yet uh, about this guy who won a judgment down in Rutland against an attorney for malpractice, $26,000. The guy was clearly you know, just excited and psyched for winning. Uh, and unfortunately, he found out the hard way that merely getting a judgment in court doesn't get you the money. They don't hand you the check No, there. no. I mean, that's where the movie ends. And <laughs> court goes, I'm awesome. I won. And then, and then, of course, you know, the reality is that <laughs> you, you then spend years trying to get that person to pay you through a series of judicial procedures, attachment, trustee process, um, perfecting the judgment liens. And this guy decided to do it himself. He was a pro sayer, and uh, he just entered this death spiral of, of uh, you know, bad decisions, and he ended up getting sanctioned by the court um, because he, he filed over and over and over again these, these you know, growingly, di um, uh, unrealistic and rambling filings with the court that had less to do with his actual case or his merits and more about, you know, this greater conspiracy that was being levied against him. And, uh, you know, that this is all in the record. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all there. The, the court's quoted from it. I mean, it's just, it's just wonderful and it's rich and we can take it and we can just, by summarizing it, sh share the wealth mm -hmm. with the people. And, and by giving it a little tweak and a couple, um, you know, sort of, uh, snarky blog style um, you know phrasings it's 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 just great material uh, we can't come up with this ourselves we really can't we've tried right. I've tried um, and it doesn't work but the material is there and the court's going to do it and then we just top it off with a cherry of legal analysis and it's it's a wonderful little Sunday there yeah, yeah. yes it makes for a great reading um, so his slow ungluing kind of is, is documented there and, and yeah can, uh, oh yeah I mean it's just clearly I mean he spent he spent a good eight years in court just filing over and over again. And the court, you know, they can't advocate for him, uh, but they give him little hints and signals and, and decisions saying, you know, you should really try this. Let's stop focusing on the conspiracy and the racketeering that you're alleging that the defendant engaged in and, uh, you know, let's, uh, and the treasonous behavior of the court heretofore, 
um, and, and get back to actually trying to collect the judgment. And of course, he didn't, and proceeded to file something. You know, some, and I can only imagine because I've seen these type of filings. You know, some 50-page rambling issue and screed about you know how he's been screwed over by life in general, the court in particular, and the defendant as the devil incarnate. The court's not going to listen to that, mm -hmm. um, and so he just spiraled, and so the court ended up sanctioning him. How do, how do cases get in front of the state Supreme Court? Is that just Every case gets to go up to the state Supreme Court. Has the option. I mean, not every case does go right. up. This so. And then if someone disagrees with the state Supreme Court, they go to federal? No. Or, where, how no. does, or is yeah. that just the end of the line? Or? It's generally the end of the line. What they can do if there's, if there's actually a federal constitutional issue, then they can appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. Okay. Okay. Um, what the Vermont Supreme Court will do very often is decide it on independent state grounds, adequate and independent state grounds, okay. which the U.S. Supreme Court has said, no, nope, we're not going to touch it. So, That's you know, if, if they're talking about like the, right, which, which, which makes sense, it's, it's a separation of powers kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so if like it, it's about the Vermont Constitution, it's not going to go anywhere. If it's a Fourth Amendment issue, there's a possibility it can sure. go up to the U.S. Supreme Court. And U.S. Supreme Court appeals are discretionary, so you have, well, mostly discretionary. They're, almost everything's discretionary. And you have hundreds and hundreds of applications and thousands of applications. Thousands. No. And, and like 50 cases a year. Yeah, 50 cases a year, maybe. If, so. I, th if I think I have, a, a, say, a First Amendment case, mm -hmm. could can I jump right to the federal, or do I have to go through well, the we, state we should, world? We should talk first off camera, but... Uh, <laughs> I, we actually have yeah. one minute, so <laughs> okay. the, the timing's good. I don't know I'll if there's an easy answer <laughs> to that question. There, there, <laughs> there is and there isn't. Uh, there's two systems of, of courts in, in our country. There's the state court system, and there's the federal court system. You can go either, either court on some things. You can go to the federal court on federal questions. So a First Amendment, sure, you can go straight can to district court, knock on go up door. to Judge Sessions' chambers, I mean, a courthouse, and, uh, and go and then go to Second Circuit Court of Appeals and then the U.S. Supreme Court if they deem you worthy. Uh, or you can file it in state court, and you would go up from the trial court, the superior court, to the Vermont Supreme Court, and if it's a federal issue, to the U.S. Supreme Court if they, again, deemed you worthy. Um, you can also, for non-federal issues, there are, you, you generally file in state court, but if it's of a large uh, enough amount of money at, at issue, and if there's diversity, which is to say you sue some you know, public access station in Ohio for, for stealing your uh, Vermont blogosphere <laughs> palindromes, and uh, you, know, they, they, uh, you, can, you can sue them for, in federal court even though it's maybe a state law issue of, of, of either contract right, or... Right, right, right. I'm talking Ohio. Yeah, and then, and then there are all kinds of crossovers that occur in the criminal world that, that Andrew mm -hmm. can probably talk about I'm at getting, length. I'm getting gross. But we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, gonna... it's a damn shame. Um, you guys are welcome back because this is uh, plenty. We're just starting to get stuff on the table. Uh, very so interesting, right. very where, informative. Where are the snacks? And there are no snacks. There's water. We expect snacks next time. Yeah, there'll be mm -hmm. snacks next time. We're going to negotiate. Um, there'll be chocolate. There won't be chips. Okay, uh, we're, we're going to have you sign a contract. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Andrew and Daniel. Uh, thank you. Visit yeah, thank the you. blog, uh, Scofflaw, at scofflegal.blogspot.com. It's uh, excellent reading, and it's really informative. Um, Could be the greatest thing since they invented the internet. Comes with laughs, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, I mean, I'm not Blogosphere saying. TV is signing off, and thanks again, and good night. Raise your right hand, Mr. President, and repeat after me. I, George Walker Bush. I, George Walker Bush. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So